José Felipe Torres. How good is the brand of a country? How much does it contribute to the progress of that specific country, that region, or the city? Does it contribute in any way? Or is it something that uh, countries just spend millions and governments spend millions um, and have no return? To answer this question, uh, the company I preside, Bloom Consulting, launches the yearly Bloom Consulting Country Brand Ranking. This ranking uh, analyzes and measures the effectiveness of each country brand, both from a tourist perspective. Oui. <laughs> from a tourist perspective, and from, uh, which will be launched mid-year, and from a tourism perspective. This one is already available, and you can download it for free with no registration at the website. And what we do exactly is to measure the state of the art of country branding. And we do this in two different dimensions, one for trade, as I mentioned, and another one for tourism. They are independent rankings, they are different rankings, there are more dimensions, and so far we only developed these two, but very soon you will have more. So how do we assess if a country has a good brand? What are the variables in our methodology? What are the variables in our ranking uh, to assess how good is this country? The first thing we do is the economic performance, and specifically in tourism, the one I'm talking about right now, uh, if a country brings goods, and uh, if a country attracts tourists and generates receipts thanks to tourism, naturally, it's a good indicator that it is a good country brand. So, naturally, it impacts in our ranking. And what you can see here uh, in the presentation I just gave and the slide that I just gave, you have uh, the four continents in a nutshell. And you can see here in green, the Americas going up in terms of receipts. And you can see really here is the orange, which is the rise of Asia which naturally is a trend, and blue, as a consequence, is Europe, who is slowly declining. Moreover, the other aspect that we measure is the digital appeal. And what we do by digital appeal is not so much about the survey, but we can actually measure the amount of searches that are produced in the most important search engines about any given destination worldwide over the last 12 months. And again, here is a fantastic trend demonstrating that Asia and all the Asian countries are the ones that are most searched for online. So that it's not a surprise to see the, on the top 10 of our ranking the, the, the Asian countries. Not only digitally when we look about this is just the search engine, but it's also the digital uh, social media appeal. And a very interesting contrast here, what you see is on Instagram, for instance, Oceania is really the continent that has a very, very big presence in this. All the other rest is a little bit a split. But again, it's not a surprise to see that on the top 10 of the Bloom Consulting Country Brand Ranking on the Tourism Edition, you can see a lot of Asian countries. The winner is the US, and of course the two powerhouses come in the second and third place, and voila, you have like a fantastic impact, like for instance for Hong Kong uh, or Macau, which has gone up and up in the ranking and will continue to progress. So the question here is, what can countries do about this? I mean, can countries really create their own country brand? Are they in control of their brand? Is this, can you brand a country? Or is this something that it's already done? Is it the brand, a logo, a slogan, an advertising campaign? Well, to answer all this, one must go a little bit into theory. And, and uh, forgive me, because it's going to be a little bit of a couple of slides that are technical, but Bear with me, because there's going to be some fun at the end. So please, please bear with me, okay? So in order to answer all this, to see really what is the country brand, one needs to understand what are the objectives of the country brand. And the, the country brand has six specific objectives that impact or will have an impact in six specific dimensions. One is the attraction of investment. The other one is the attraction of tourism. The other one is uh, the other is talent, workforce. The other one is about pride, diplomacy, and exports. These are the six areas where the country brand, either for country, for city, or for region, really 
should be and should have as an objective. Each and single one of these six objectives have a specific stakeholder, a specific target audience. I'm just going to give three. For instance, for investment, of course, it's investors. For tourism, it's tourists. And of course, for talent, it's workforce, and so on and so forth. All of these six uh, target audiences or stakeholders, according to our CRC brand wheel, um, have a specific need. They are looking for something. If, if we could sum up in one word, this is what they're looking for in general from any destination. So an investor is looking for an advantage to invest in that territory. A tourist is looking for an experience. Whatever that experience is, relaxation, fun, it's an experience if I could sum it up. And a workforce is looking for talent and so on, like uh, the nationals are looking for admiration, general public respect, and export uniqueness in, 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 in a specific company from that country. So in a nutshell, what countries try to do is to try to, uh, or what these stakeholders perceive of a specific geography, is a consequence of these little dots that you see around. These little dots that you see around are the actions, activities, and policies, such as laws, here can put the communication as one of those dots, like many, many things that is the behavior of the country that will establish a perception that we call the central idea about any given geography. So, for instance, when a country uh, tries to uh, advertise in a way, communicate in a way, or create a policy, or create a law, whatever the, that they are doing, all the combination of these actions is what establishes the brand. The problem is that countries today, and regions and cities, they don't have like a coherent message. They don't have like a briefing for all the actions and activities and policies which are those dots that you see there. And this creates a confusion for countries and, and for all these stakeholders. So that's why many countries, people don't understand what they stand for because from one side they invade the country and then they donate money for charity. So people don't have a clear idea what is that country. So there's no consistency in all those little dots that you see here. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me, okay? We're getting there to the fun part. Um, and I'm gonna give you another example. New Zealand. New Zealand has a clear central idea which is about purity. And all the actions, activities and policies they do match this idea. I mean, New Zealand is a fantastic case. It's a country, 4.5 million inhabitants. It's the furthest away country from Euros. It's has a giant next to which, which is Australia, and look at it. Like, they really establish themselves. And why? Because they have this central idea, this, this vision for the country that comes from the central government and works in all these six dimensions. So, of course, of course, whenever they're going to go into an investor, they don't want to invest and attract a fantastic car maker because it pollutes. They want to say, no, that's not our specialty. We are about purity. So film producers come that want to shoot in beautiful landscapes, and, and that's why the Lord of the Rings was shot, shot there, and so on and so forth. So the tourism is also aligned with, with, with purity. And there's just one briefing, one focus, one idea, one emotion that people portray and perceive New Zealand for. And that is because they have a clear message. And it works in all the six stakeholders, in all the six dimensions that I just mentioned. Now let's talk about Spain, for instance. Spain has a central idea, which is fun. And, and when we look into tourism, I mean, this is a consequence. Sometimes it's not controlled. It is just a question like, you know, random accident, things that happen, and you have that perception. So, you know, because you have the fiesta, you have the bullfighting, you have the wine, you have the football, you, you really have this perception of fun. And the idea, I mean, even without advertising, it's just the way it is, and people perceive it like that. And they really are really well established in fun, for instance, for tourism. Now, can they take this to an investor and say, hey, invest 20 million countries in biotechnology, and the investor goes like, well... I don't know what you're going to do with my money, you know? It looks like you're going to have just a huge party, <laughs> you know, because you're perceived as fun. So sometimes these uh, central ideas, they have to work independently for all the uh, different uh, stakeholders, as you can see. So, end of the theory, let's go into the practice. 
And the practice is this. Let's create right here, right now, a country brand project. A country that I like very much, which is Latvia, which I will tell why I chose that country. But we're going to create here a country brand project. And um, we're going to focus mainly on diplomacy and pride. Normally, I focus very much on, on tourism and, and, and trade. But here, I'm going to focus in diplomacy and pride. We talked already about who are the stakeholders, what they're looking for, which is admiration and respect. And you know, the first thing that I would say to Latvia is you know, we have to define this central idea. And the central idea, it's something that needs to portray an emotion, something that people want and admire, again, have the respect and admiration that I was talking about. So what could I say and what could be this central idea? What should be the topic around it? There are like six main topics that really create this emotion for this kind of central idea that people care about. I mean, I cannot say central ideas such as safe because nobody cares about safe. Nobody really respects that. It's different. So here are the six dimensions. And I'm just going to give an example. For instance, humanity. When we talk about humanity, I'm going to give an example of a country that did it well. But again, country branding is a continuous set of actions. It cannot be an isolated one. But if you continue on that dimension, you will then establish that perception. For instance, humanity. We all remember Ebola. We were all going to die of it. We were all very scared about this. Now. Nobody talks about this anymore, so I think it's done, the cure. But nevertheless, whenever there was this outbreak, people were so scared. Who was going to save the world? Cuba. <laughs> like, what the hell? Cuba? Yes, Cuba, together with the World Health Organization, said that they will send a battalion of doctors to cure and to eradicate the disease and to control it, together with the US. My God, thank you, Cuba. You know? And every time I see these images, I go like, wow. There was no advertising about this. There was no marketing. There was no logos. There was no anything. But there you go. There was an idea. It's like Cuba is saving the world. How fantastic is this? A great demonstration to see that you don't have to be big. You just have to be as bold and have a great idea. Or for instance, for progress, whenever we talk about who's going to save Europe <laughs> and who's going to create Europe all together. You know? And when I look into this and I say, thank you, Germany, for bonding us together. Or whenever I talk about economy, you know, look at you know, just the performance, the economic performance, how important it was for the BRICS. Of course, the B and the R are losing it, but it worked very well for a long time. So again, what should be the example I would give to Latvia? And I'm going to go into the progress dimension. And the central idea is something, like I said, that is difficult because it's a country that is 2 million inhabitants. It's not very well known. How can I create something to the world that is relevant to the stakeholders that I mentioned? How can I create this kind of respect and admiration? How can I place Latvia on the map? How can I inspire others? But at the same time, it's pretty simple. You know, Latvia was a country that was a Soviet Union republic, if you want to call it, it USSR. It was independent very recently in the 90s. It was a country that boomed uh, right after, and then he had a crash, he had a bang in the uh, financial crisis. But you know, it was a country, and you see here the deflation, it was going mad, it was everybody, but it was a country that did their homework. It was a country that taught Europe a lesson. It was, after this, the first country to come out of the financial crisis. It was the rising star of Europe in the late, two th well, 2000. 13, 14, was really the example that they were giving to, to, to the rest of the world. Wow! And to Europe, and they are saying that they were implementing new sophisticated measures to you know, internal deflation, how they call it. And then you see that it's a country that is covered 50% in forest. Wow, what a fantastic example for the rest of the countries. You know, like, they really respect nature, and, and they have one of the most skilled and, I would say, dedicated workforce that one can see. They are not perfect, but they are perfectionist. And, and all this together, they already have given proofs. And they have what we call the tailwind and the opportunity to position themselves as the pioneers of Europe or the pioneer for Europe and the think tank for Europe. And what do we mean by this? We mean that they could be the experiment place to implement new policies in Europe and advise Europe on how to do it. So they could actually innovate, implement, support, and advise Europe on their policies. And, 
And, and, and I know it's bold, but it needs to be bold in order to create this emotion. And like I said, I need respect and admiration. And the first thing I need to do is to create an institute to say that like the World Economic Forum is in Davos, you know, this European Future Organization is an initiative launched by Latvia and the Latvian government. It stays there. It's the epicenter. It's like where the solution of Europe is going to take place. And they have even a vision. They have a mandate. They have a book. They have a book that talks about this. And they go like, you know, where it all starts in Europe. The new Europe starts here. And they even have a motto. I'm going to read what is their focus. The Europe uh, Future Organization is an initiative launched by the Latvian government that outlines the vision of the nation for Europe's future. Working side by side with the European Commission and all other European nations, the objective of this initiative is to become the pioneer nation in Europe for Europe on how to design, experiment and implement policies for the progress of society. Wow! You know, I go like, I feel something when I see about this. And, 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 and they, they, they even communicated, okay, communication can be one of these examples, but they are communicating their vision and what... But it's not just a question about the communication side of it. And, they, and see, you're not saying Latvia, but they're saying that they have an institute. This per se is a policy. But whenever they, you look at this, you know, it's not just about saying it and the president launching it, of Latvia launching it, but it's also, you know, the studies, they, the, the experiment they had, the examples they had, and they can actually write a paper around it. So, for instance, you know, environment in Europe, 40% foresting, a possibility for every nation, European nation. Sorry, that was a typo there. Or education in Europe, web programming at elementary school, shaping the educational system. Um, finance in Europe, internal deflation, a new concept. So, the things that they test, they write about it, and they advise the other countries on how to do it. Wow, they really see it as the European pioneer in this sense. And this is, you know, something that naturally people will talk about, people will respect, people will want, and in essence, people will perceive Latvia as the pioneer of Europe. And this is something that they can invite, not just for the Latvians to do, but they can invite countries from other nationalities, other nationals, to work there. And in the end, this is my secret agenda for them, is to move the European Commission into Riga and not into Brussels. So here's an example on how to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very inspiring as, Thank as you. well. So I don't know now if I'm going to move to Latvia or to, um, to New Zealand, <laughs> but I'm just... I'm just in between. Thank you very much, uh, Jose Felipe, for this very inspiring uh, Thank you. speech. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.